It encompasses 946 acres on what was the original Rock Island. The importance of this land was identified as early as 1809, and it was set aside as a federal military reservation by an act of Congress and solidified in 1816 with the construction of Fort Armstrong. During the Civil War, the island was home to a prison camp for captured Confederate soldiers, established as both an arsenal and a center for the manufacture of weaponry and munitions. Today, it provides manufacturing, logistics, and base support services for the armed forces, and it remains the proud centerpiece of the Quad Cities community. Good evening, I'm Steve Long. Welcome to the Rock Island Arsenal. Tonight, we're taking you inside the gates of this magnificent facility to share in its history and its beauty. You'll see the arsenal like you've never seen it before. This is a CBS4 News special, Rock Island Arsenal, Inside the Gates, brought to you in part by the Rock Island Arsenal Federal Credit Union. One building on the arsenal was designed and built as the residence for the highest ranking officer on the base, but most know it simply as Quarters One. It was designed to have about 50 rooms that cover 20,000 square feet. That's a big house. How big? It was the second largest single family dwelling owned by the U.S. government, the largest being the White House. History was made on April 22, 1856, when the first railroad bridge to cross the Mississippi officially opened, allowing trains to travel from Rock Island to Davenport. Riverboats saw the railroad as direct competition. Immediately, the uh, owners of the boat uh, filed suit against the Rock Island Bridge Company. The trial would be held in Chicago. The boat owners not only wanted to be paid for their losses, but their high-powered lawyers also asked the courts to order the destruction of the bridge as an impediment to river travel. But the bridge company brought in their own high-powered attorneys, including a young man by the name of Abraham Lincoln. Made of solid steel, the government bridge is an icon. Built in 1896, it's more burly than beautiful and shares much in common with its predecessor. So that was the first time when that bridge opened in 72 that uh, you could actually take your wagon across the river without having to use a ferry. It's not only durable, but distinctive. What's really interesting about this bridge, I think, is it's only one of two in the world that turns 360 degrees both ways. Its job is to hold back water and make the river deep enough for navigation. Just below the dam is a spinning, spitting torrent of water, referred to as the drowning machine. There's a series of ropes hanging beneath the Arsenal Bridge. If you get to the dam, uh, your chances are not so good. It's a majestic landmark that has stood the test of time. Tonight, we're not just taking you inside the gates, we're taking you inside the clock tower at the Rock Island Arsenal. You could say this place is solid as a rock. Using local limestone from LeClaire, Iowa, it was the island's first permanent government building. But it's not the function of the building that catches the eye. It's the faces at the top of the tower. As amazing as it is to see the tower from the inside out, there is more. How many people get to uh, go up and see the, the bell up here? Uh, not very many. Uh, rarely do we even go up here, and, and more rarely do we bring visitors up here. The view from the roof takes your breath away. Just after the turn of the century, in the early 1900s, the Rock Island Arsenal got the opportunity to produce a rifle that would end up in the hands of thousands of U.S. soldiers. In 1904, the folks in Washington decided to make the rifle in Rock Island, in fact, the very room where the museum is now was once loaded with machinery, one of two buildings here used to make the famous rifle. You can learn a lot at the museum, but the real history of the Rock Island Arsenal lies deep within the men and women who have served here. A lot of them were killed in an action in the, what some call the Sunni Triangle or the Triangle of Death in Iraq. And the emotions are still raw. So when he talks to soldiers, he knows where they're coming from best thing you can do is listen. Doesn't matter if you know what they're going through or not, but listen. And let us tell our stories. Thank you for being with us tonight, and we invite you to join us every Thursday night on 10 at 10 on CBS4 as we continue to explore the Rock Island Arsenal inside the gates.